they were right. Sure, there are the robot maids and the glasses that allow the blind to see. But this, this is the future. That's right, a toilet that you can talk to, tell it to flush or whatever you'd want to discuss with your commode. And how much does this one run? The new Mi Black will start at about $7,500. Wow. The hottest thing in the world of technology these days is your voice. You want a pizza, me? Soon you'll be able to tell an almost infinite number of things what to do. Open can. Thousands of products at the world's largest tech convention respond to commands or a link to voice assistants like Amazon's Alexa or Google Assistant. Industry analyst Ben Arnold says what he's seeing here is bringing us closer to the idea of ambient computing in which all the electronics around us can sense us and respond to our needs. It's more than just controlling technology products with your voice. It's really adding a layer of intelligence and getting technology products to uh, work a little bit better into your life. According to one estimate, by the end of this year, intelligent assistance will be in one million Canadian homes. With the battle for smart speaker supremacy heating up, no coincidence that this was the first time Google has displayed at this convention for years. Hey Google, what does artificial intelligence mean? Artificial intelligence. The Toronto IT specialist Nick Hartman is impressed by what he's seen so far. It's the future just by interacting with voice. It's, it's fantastic. But do you actually need to converse with all of your appliances? Probably not. With companies rushing to get on the voice tech bandwagon, in many cases they may be solving problems that don't exist. You can have the voice activated washer and dryer, but you still have to move the wet clothes, the wet clean clothes from the washer to the dryer, and why not just push start like you can do already? You can use voice to control it. Take smart home technology. The tech graveyard is littered with smart products no one wanted. Voice control alone, say those in the industry, isn't enough. These are things like, hey, I just want to be able to automate turning on my lights, or I just want to be able to turn my thermostat up or down. Those are not really delivering on any major value proposition. I will get a drink. If it doesn't make what you're doing faster, better, or cheaper, then it's just a $7,000 toilet that listens. Kim Brunhuber, CBC News, Las Vegas. Kim makes a good point. Who wants to drop a month's salary on a gossip thrown in? Yet, Google and Amazon are investing in this kind of technology in a huge way. So let's bring in our senior technology reporter, Matt Braga, for a little more insight. All these listening devices in our homes, Matt, is this the end of, you know, tapping out a search for information? <laughs> so for certain types of tasks, things that you would otherwise uh, open up an app for, checking your weather, playing music, turning on your lights, turning on your dishwasher perhaps, uh, all of these things are things that Google and Amazon want to make a little bit more natural, like you were just asking a friend or a family member to do these things. And to do that, now we're seeing them expand beyond speakers to actually put this functionality in the light switches, in your car, in the speakers, in the fridges themselves. Okay, so it's all very convenient. I, I get that, but the cynical part of me says this isn't actually about my convenience, it's about my data. So mm -hmm. what, what exactly are they looking for? Uh, so Amazon and Google, of course, are both companies. They exist to make money. Amazon, that being selling you more things. Uh, Google selling advertising. And so, of course, they're going to be interested in things like what music you're playing, when you're turning on your lights, when you're getting home, where you're going. Uh, all of this is stuff that they can infer through your use of these devices and uh, certainly stuff that they could use to further their business goals. And when you buy one, are you actively signing on for that information to be collected? Uh, so in both cases, you do have some degree of control over what you share. I know with Google in particular, you can uh, give it the ability to use your search history or to use things like location in some of its responses. Um, but by and large, the, the delineation that these companies make is, uh, while they say that they don't share or sell your personal information, things that have been stripped of personal information, so-called de-identified data, uh, can be a little bit more fair game. Last question, very briefly. I've tried one of these things. Feels a little clumsy. Is the tech ready, really? <laughs> so one of the big hurdles I think these companies still have to overcome is context, right? They understand what they've been programmed to understand. They don't really understand us the way that humans do. And so the that's the thing. The way you and I do. Absolutely. Okay. And so that's what we're working towards next. <laughs> okay, Matt Braga, thanks very much. Thanks, Adrian.